Hello, hello, and welcome to one of the easiest of these I'm gonna make. Use of command to Victory in the West campaign historic branch conference 5. With 8 missions from Shell to Colmar pockets which you will crack in a couple of sessions. And not very long ones. I'm not really meaning to boast but most of these missions went down on my first or second try with the exception of Battle of the Bulge which maybe took 3 tries and built for a which I admit got a little annoying at some point. I think one explanation to this lies in the objective simplicity of these missions because it represents the Allies taking it slowly, properly accumulating all their forces before launching any offensives, meaning that you have plenty of troops and your objectives are not too distant to begin with. This is very much in contrast to the ahistoric branch, where you are effectively one conference ahead and you have to take lots and lots of ground with decreasing amounts of troops. The second presumable reason is something I became aware of in a recent Steam thread, where the designer of the game actually mentioned the snowballing present in the campaigns and I think the historic branch of the fifth conference is very much a case in point here because up to that point I was very successful in preserving my troops maintaining my veteran and elite divisions and all of their specialist steps and so most of the troops I was given in this conference were effectively Rambos especially the Brits and the Canadians which is an important lesson and a thing to keep in mind as you complete the D-Day landing missions where the potential for losing lots of troops is pretty high and avoiding those losses means an easy fifth conference for the historic branch and a feasible ahistoric branch. Also the simplicity of these missions is a good indication that you shouldn't waste too much prestige buying reinforcements, especially steps for your troops because the missions coming in conference 6 while not mind-blowingly hard will be more difficult difficult than those in 5, and having enough resources to give, for example, your HQs the capability to launch assault crossings is a good idea. Now let's look at the missions. If you see this mission, you almost certainly failed to take the Take the Shelt objective in the Advance on Antwerp mission. And to be honest, if you're going for the historic routes, why not do it? Because it's a nice little mission with a tiny little trick. If you've been a regular viewer of these videos, you may have noticed that I'm a bit skeptical about the game's warnings about, oh, get engineering level 3 for all of your HQs, are you gonna fail? While in most cases it's not true, Shelt is an example of the opposite. If you don't give a sword crossing to the Canucks, you are screwed here. You're simply not going to be able to handle those major rivers enveloping all of the objectives you need to take. Alright, now let's see what you're supposed to actually do in this mission. The first global tip is the fact that none of the objectives are city hexes. They're all swamps and you won't have to worry about fire suppression, turning towns into ruins and rendering those hexes unconquerable. So get your units as much artillery as you can. I actually was very low on prestige at this point in the campaign and had to scrounge up all of the 25 pounders and priests that I had. Tip number two, forget about everything to the east and north of Wonstrecht. None of this leads you anywhere close to victory and don't be tempted by your elite tank divisions hanging about. You will only use them as fast artillery batteries providing fire support where it's needed the most. And so your first step here will be to take Wonstrecht on turn one. Soften those defenders up with all the fire suppression you can muster and then push that British infantry division to take Wonstrecht. Equipping it properly with great things like Royal Marines or Engineers is always a good idea. Plus feel free to send all of your air support and that saturation strike you get. The beauty about taking Wonstrecht right away is that even if your saturation strike doesn't help you directly in Wonstrecht, it'll probably kill some enemies somewhere else and the enemy HQ connected to the island defenders through Wonsdrecht only will not be able to provide any reinforcements 
or improvements in their fortifications, which is where once again fire suppression comes into play. Because remember, no matter how bad your predictions of fire suppressions are, there's always a 25% chance of reducing, which is why you should focus that fire suppression on the enemy units preventing you from crossing those major rivers, even if it takes a couple of turns to destroy their bunkers this way. Otherwise, just slowly advance, build bridges across major rivers and bring more troops into those islands. Once you get the hang of using fire suppression in conjunction with assault crossings, this mission isn't gonna present too much of a challenge. Just make sure that you keep a reasonably strong unit in Bonsdrecht. I've seen the AI launch a successful desperate last turn attack on Bonsdrecht, and it might completely screw your playthrough of the mission, because retaking that place isn't always too easy. One peek at the map of the Hürgen Forest mission is enough to understand what it's gonna be about. A big enemy salient with difficult terrain and heavily fortified defenders. Yeah, you really don't need a masters in English to spell pincer maneuvers in this one. However, the beauty of the scenario is that the most easiest and obvious objective, i.e. Ruhr River, is an open hex that will invite a crapload of German counterattacks. So why while you are free to kick out its defenders on turn one, don't go there. Let the AI bring a tank division to cover that hex and then kill that tank division. Feel free to repeat this as much as you want, just make sure you don't lose troops there. The reason being that the main and most interesting action will take place to the south around St. Vit. Send your best troops and tanks there and blast through those hills and then kick that tank division out, which is surprisingly not too difficult to do. And while the forested hex just above that area is going to be slightly tricky and you will not be able to take it on turn one, almost certainly, clearing it is critical for you to be able to set up a supply hub where that tank division just used to be providing that area with supplies because your tanks will push forward, specifically to the north to block that railway line leading from Köln. Seeing your advance there, the AI will almost certainly blow up the bridge leading from Köln to the Ruhr River objective, accomplishing your task for you, i.e. blocking one of the supply lines for the entire salient in the forest. At this point, the only railway line feeding this area is through the north, and if you block the Ruhr River objective hex, the Hürgen Forest and Ruhr Dam's defenders will remain completely out of supply. So once that railway from Köln is blocked one way or the other, clear the Ruhr River Hex once again and this time occupy it with a strong tank division but still give it a rear guard badge. Your goal here is not to hold the objective but to hold it at the beginning of the enemy turn so that the defenders in the forest don't get their supplies. And once they do completely run out this will all turn to a huge XP farming fest. Oh and one final note. Watch out for that tank division in the south of the map. It will eventually wake up and threaten the flanks of your advancing tanks around St. Vitt. Lorraine is another mission in this conference that didn't cause me too much trouble. As you can see, the biggest obstacle here is the dirt, and I found that because of that Strasbourg and Saverne gap, are kind of difficult because there are some defenders and these places are kind of difficult to reach. Which leads us to the main trick of this mission. Why have a Saverne gap that is too well defended and is way too far if you can use a generic nameless gap just south of it? That's right, the road along the bottom edge of the map is the key to this mission. So you can comfortably send like three well-equipped infantry divisions towards Strasbourg and take it very easily. In my playthrough, the AI did not expect it and even left it unfortified. The only significant problem in that area is the supply, which is why you should use your 7th Army HQ to give them emergency supply and 
push your tanks along the railway towards Southern Gap to get that Kavasid railway connection, especially since with Strasbourg down, the AI will not be able to very easily muster forces to defend that area. Also, interestingly, that tank division just east of the 7th Army HQ is somewhat passive. I've never seen it move anywhere else and the infantry around it is kind of like that too, so use this to your advantage. In the north, the battle is much more straightforward. The only serious difficulty here is once again the dirt. Just push through Mets using your engineers and set-piece attacks and grab every opportunity to use your tanks against enemy tanks and destroy them. Try to avoid fighting in the marshes, it's very difficult. And ultimately, as the enemy weakens in the north, go and take Zalautan. Once again, with engineers and set-piece attacks, it shouldn't pose too much of a problem. At a first glance, Belfur Gap might not look like a lot of trouble, but trust me, trust me, it is. And regardless of the advice I give you today, there might be a good chance that you'll be screwed by the weather. By God, you'll pray for some snow in this one. And you'll probably have to restart it a bunch of times before you get it right. But thankfully, it is short and restarting isn't such a big of an issue. So while obviously your initial push will have to go along the railway line through Belfort, you have these seemingly tempting flanks north and south of the town. And let me immediately tell you that you should forget about the north. You can comfortably send that division south to help out with Belfort and beyond as... Because of the dirt, the German defensive line there will be virtually impenetrable. South, on the other hand, is the key to succeeding in this mission. So your immediate task in this mission, in addition to pushing towards Belfort, is kicking that German division guarding the bridge out, use whatever forces you can muster there, and repair that bridge because with it in place on turn two, you will be able to very easily push that southern tank division around Belfort and towards Mulhouse and ultimately Colmar, which is probably the most difficult to objective out there. As for Belfort itself, you should have plenty of troops and specialist steps to actually take the town without too much difficulty. As you can see, it's not well defended, and you should do everything to get as close to Mulhouse as possible. But try to engage your tanks in the battles around Mulhouse as little as you can. Forget about the hills west of Colmar and push your tanks south and east of it to encircle the defenders and it will be a well-fortified tank division there. To launch a couple of faint attacks, remember it's a town you shouldn't use your fire suppression and then bring an infantry division or two to mop up that tank division, maybe kick it out and take Colmar. Actually giving the motorization ability to the French HQ is a very good idea here and in some of the future battles that this HQ will participate in in the historic branch. Battle of the Bulge is the biggest, the most difficult, and arguably the most interesting mission we're going to talk about today. And as is often the case with these slightly more interesting missions, this is a mixed offensive and defensive scenario. And let's look first at the offensive part, which will probably cause you slightly less trouble. I know, I know, the eponymous bulge looks very scary, but for the most part it's a boring lump of inertia who's mostly gonna try and fail at taking Baston. That's right, I've never seen the AI actually destroying the Baston defenders, so your main task there is to occasionally break through to them, provide them with supplies and fortifications, and that's it, they'll feel pretty good on their own. You really don't need to hold any hexes around it. You can even rear guard those troops that break through to power troopers just to conserve them. Also, don't try to attack around moods crossings. The enemy is very passive there. Maintain a zone of control perimeter just in case. But please don't launch any serious attacks in there. It's not worth it. You just have neither the forces nor the command points to crunch through all of the German units and deal with the Eliminate Bulge objective in time. Your task here will be to cut their supply off, and this will happen south of Ruhr Dams. As you can see, I've concentrated there pretty much all of my special forces and all of the other juicier specialist steps that I could get my hands on, and your immediate task right from the start of mission will be to push southwards 
from that area. Make sure you keep someone in Ruhr Dams. Once again, I've never seen the AI try to take this objective if defended, but obviously if it's not, it'll take the opportunity. Anyway, all of the forces of the First Army should be focused on that breakthrough and on containing the pocket, preventing the German tank divisions from breaking out. Actually, the defenders there are weak enough for you to block the enemy supply line and take that supply hub by the end of turn 3. After which actually eliminating the bulge isn't gonna be such a difficult task. As an auxiliary push, you can actually clear the area northeast of Luxembourg. Helping Bastogne is the priority for the 3rd US Army, but if you have a bunch of command points left, feel free to use those set piece attacks and send those tank divisions northeast to help out with the encirclement. Now onto a smaller and slightly more annoying bit around Hagenau where you actually have to defend. Rule number one, don't attack until you fully deplete the enemy mechanized troops. You don't have enough forces to launch a proper meeting engagement in that area as the enemy tanks will just very easily encircle you, corner you and destroy you. Instead, leave a strong infantry division in Hagenau and fortify it as quickly as you can. Use no retreat if necessary, but if well fortified, I've never seen the AI attacking that town. Otherwise, stick to the forests around Hagenau, which you should also fortify command points permitting. Keep away from the flat hexes and if you do leave a tank division in there, make sure it's provided with a rear guard token. All in all, obviously use every opportunity to damage the attacking forces and use the fact that fire suppression doesn't eliminate the attacker's fortifications to your advantage. Finally, and actually slightly more importantly, is the fact that the Germans will try to break through just west of Hagenau. Those mechanized divisions are very capable of kicking your infantry out of the forest and blocking the railway line feeding Hagenau. If they take that little town next to the bridge, you are pretty much screwed, as the probability of you dislodging a mechanized division sitting there quickly is pretty low. So keep an infantry division in the town at all times and prepare a tank-based fire brigade to destroy any breakthroughs. Beside the cool sounding name, veritable and grenade is somewhat unremarkable. It is very much a result of snowballing if you do really well in previous missions. I did. I ended up with elite forces here and I haven't seen any particular difficulties in it. Just keep to the schedule, bring your engineers, artillery and special forces to Reichswald and Goch and it's worth actually pointing out that this mission is another star hour for our celebrity British 6th Airborne Division, which we last saw in the advance on Antwerp mission where these guys just kicked the booties of the defenders of Le Havre beyond and this mission is no exception, the combination of elite power troopers plus Hobart's funnies plus commandos plus Priest is a highly explosive mixture that will destroy enemy objectives and turn a mission like appropriately called Veritable and Grenade into a walk in the park, so try not to lose these paratroopers during the D-Day. Also, they will be put into planes for later missions and you will not lose those specialist steps. In situations like these, the specialist steps go to the corresponding HQ, so you really don't have to worry about losing them or returning them anywhere. Also, so now we know what the M in Gladbach actually stands for. Mention Gladbach. I know your true name. You are my slave now. I'm happy to say that Lumberjack and Anderson is one of the few missions in Unity of Command 2 that I actually managed to complete on my first try. And interestingly, it's a bit of a representation of different supply situations you can see in this game. If you look at the very north, you've got plenty of troops, a lot of tanks, and a very nearby objective in the form of Köln. So just blast defenders of that bridge into oblivion using your artillery 
artillery, push your tanks in and take that objective. You probably will not be able to go much further than that, but if you feel successful, push south towards Koblenz. The second supply scenario begins at Luxembourg, and it's the situation where you do advance and you advance along the railway, which is never a bad idea as it always gives you perfect supply. So punch through those double defensive lines that the Germans have there and push your tanks along that railway towards Remagenbridge and Koblenz. This prong is slightly more critical to your victory than all the stuff happening around Köln, because in addition to Remagen Bridge and Koblenz, which these troops will take, this group will then pivot south towards Mainz and Ludwigshafen, where your southern troops will very likely need additional firepower. Also, Remagen Bridge is very likely to be occupied by the time you get to it, and it's not a terrible idea to give the US 3rd Army HQ the assault crossing ability, especially since it'll need that ability in later missions. Our third and final scenario covers the southern section of the front. You have relatively long distances, and it's very unlikely that you'll get a railway connection here, because the Saarbrücken Railway is a dead end and the Ludwigshafen branch is a bit too well defended, so set up a supply hub near the initial front line, level 3 should be enough and push through those plain hexes. It's much easier and more effective than hunting Germans in the forest. Try to take Kaiserlautern as quickly as possible. By the way, forget about Zabrücken, it can stay in German hands. And then get your best equipped troops, as usual engineers, special forces, blah blah blah, towards mines and Ludwigsfarfen, which are very likely to be defended by well-fortified infantry by that point. I found this to be the trickiest bit of the mission, so as I've already mentioned, it's a very good idea to plan for an additional secondary push from the north with the units that you use to take Koblenz and Magen Bridge. Here's a little hint for you. Giving your French first army HQ the bridge building ability and ideally the assault crossing ability is a really good idea. If you want to easily deal with Colmar pocket mission that is, and please don't be like me because my French HQ had neither of these skills and I had to figure out how not to restart the entire conference and here's how. Point one, and obviously this is the theme for the entire historic branch of this conference, the difficulty of this mission depends on how well you performed in previous missions and if you've been able to preserve your elites and well-equipped troops. As you can see here, I did, and I didn't have any trouble attacking from the north and from the south, and the Germans don't present you with anything that a couple of well-placed set-piece attacks and suppressive fire wouldn't handle. And the critical hex here is New Brazac. Once you take it, you will have plenty of encircled German troops to provide you with a required number of prisoners, and it's very likely that the AI will actually use the tank division it has and that you need to do destroy to defend New Brazac, and if it retreats on your attack, which happens quite often, just leave New Brazac undefended or just don't take it depending on the situation, and the AI will gleefully send that tank back into your hands, quite often into the pocket, letting you use it for prisoners as well. And this is it. This is a tiny and reasonably easy mission. You really don't need to cross the river to accomplish the prisoner objective, and if something goes awry, the small size means that you can easily restart and replay it. And this is it for today. I really hope at least some of these explanations have been useful too, because once again, these missions are easy for the most part. And if you're still left wanting for more challenge, stay tuned for the next and last video in this series, as we'll cover the entirety of the sixth conference and the unthinkable. So like, comment, and subscribe. And until then, cheers.